We will pull you out, said the fat controller, but Henry only blew steam at him. Everyone pulled except the fat controller, because, <coughs> he said, my doctor has forbidden me to pull. But still Henry stayed in the tunnel. Then they tried pushing from the other end. The fat controller said, one, two, three, push. But he didn't help. <coughs> My doctor has forbidden me to push, he said. They pushed and pushed and pushed, but still Henry stayed in the tunnel. At last, Thomas came along. The guard waved his red flag and stopped him. Everyone argued with Henry. Look, it has stopped raining, they said. Yes, but it will begin again soon, said Henry. And what would become of my green paint with red stripes then? Thomas pushed and puffed and pushed as hard as ever he could. Still, Henry stayed in the tunnel. Eventually, even the fat controller gave up. We shall take away your rails, he said, and leave you here for always and always and always. They took up the old rails and built a wall in front of him so that Henry couldn't get out of the tunnel anymore. All he could do was watch the trains rushing through the other tunnel. He was very sad because he thought no one would ever see his lovely green paint with red stripes again. As time went on, Edward and Gordon would often pass by. Edward would say, peep, peep, hello. And Gordon would say, poop, 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 serves you right. Poor Henry had no steam to answer. His fire had gone out. Sutton dirt from the tunnel had spoilt his lovely green paint and red stripes anyway. He wondered if he would ever be allowed to pull trains again. But I think he deserved his punishment. Don't you? Now trucks are silly and noisy. They talk a lot and don't attend to what they are doing. And I'm sorry to say they play tricks on an engine who is not used to them. Edward knew all about trucks. He warned Thomas to be careful, but Thomas was too excited to listen. The shunter fastened the coupling, and when the signal dropped, Thomas was ready. The guard blew his whistle, peep, peep, answered Thomas, and started off. But the trucks weren't ready. Oh, 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 they screamed, wait, Thomas, wait. But Thomas wouldn't wait. Come on, come on, he puffed. All right, all right, don't fuss, all right, don't fuss, grumbled the trucks. Thomas began going faster and faster. Whee! He whistled as he rushed through Henry's tunnel. Hurry, hurry, called Thomas. He was feeling very proud of himself, but the trucks grew crosser and crosser. At last, Thomas slowed down as he came to Gordon's Hill. Steady now, steady, warned the driver as they reached the top. He began to put on the brakes. We're stopping, we're stopping, called Thomas. 
No, 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 answered the trucks bumping into each other. Go on, go on. Before the driver could stop them, they had pushed Thomas down the hill and were rattling and laughing behind him. Poor Thomas tried hard to stop them from making him go too fast. Stop pushing, stop pushing, he hissed, but the trucks took no notice. Go on, go on, they giggled in their silly way. There's the station. Oh dear, what shall I do, he cried. He rattled straight through and swerved into the good yard. Thomas shut his eyes. I must stop. <laughs> Oh, 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 said the trucks. We want a proper engine, not a red monster. James took no notice and started as soon as the guard was ready. Come along, come along, he puffed. We won't, we won't, screamed the trucks. But James didn't care, and he pulled the screeching trucks sternly out of the station. Trucks tried hard to make him give up, but he still kept on. Sometimes their brakes would slip on, and sometimes their axles would run hot. And each time the trouble had to be put right. And each time James would start again, determined not to let them beat him. Give up, give up, you can't pull us, you can't, you can't call the trucks. I can and I will, I can and I will, puffed James. And slowly but surely, he pulled them along the line. At last they saw Gordon's Hill. Look out for trouble, James, warned his driver. We'll go fast and get them up before they know it. Don't let them stop you. So James went faster and soon they were halfway up. I'm doing it, I'm doing it, he panted. Will the top never come? Then, with a sudden jerk, it all came easier. I've done it, I've done it, he puffed. Hooray, it's easy now. But his driver shut off steam. They've done it again. We've left our tail behind. Look. The last trucks were running backwards down the hill. The coupling had snapped. But the guard stopped the trucks and got out to warn approaching engines. That's why it was easy, said James, as he backed the other trucks carefully down. What silly things trucks are. There might have been an accident. Shall I help you, James? called Edward. Uh, no, thank you, answered James. I'll pull them myself. Good. Don't let them beat you. You're doing well, whistled Edward, as James slowly struggled up the hill. I can do it, I can do it, he puffed. He pulled and puffed as hard as he could. I've done it, I've done it, he panted. They reached their station safely and James was resting in the yard when Edward pulled up. Peep, peep, he whistled. Then James saw the fat controller. Oh dear, what will he say, he asked himself. But the fat controller was smiling. I was in Edward's train and I saw everything, he said. You've made the most troublesome trucks on the line behave. After that, you deserve to keep your red coat. You'll need your snowplow for the next journey, Thomas, said his driver. <laughs> Snow is silly soft stuff, it won't stop me. The snowplow was heavy and uncomfortable and made Thomas cross. He shook it and he banged it, and when they got back, it was so damaged that the driver had to take it off. You're a very naughty engine, he said to Thomas. Next morning, Thomas's driver and fireman came early and worked hard to mend the snowplow, but they couldn't make it fit. Thomas was pleased. I shan't have to wear it, I shan't have to wear it, he puffed to Annie and Clarabel. But they were rather worried. I hope it's all right, I hope it's all right, they whispered to each other. The driver was worried too. It's not bad here, he said to the fireman, but it's sure to be deep in the valley. 
silly soft stuff, Puff Thomas. I didn't need that stupid old thing yesterday, and I shan't today. Snow can't stop me. He rushed into a tunnel thinking how clever he was, but there was trouble ahead. Cinders and ashes, said Thomas. I'm stuck. And he was. Back, Thomas. Back, said his driver. Thomas tried, but his wheels spun and he couldn't move. The guard went back for help while everyone else tried to dig the snow away. But as fast as they dug, more snow slipped down until Thomas was nearly buried. Oh, my wheels and coupling rods. I shall have to stop here till I'm frozen. What a silly engine I am. And Thomas began to cry. At last, a bus came to rescue the passengers. And then, who should come to Thomas's rescue but Terence? Snow never worries him. He pulled the empty coaches away, then came back for Thomas. Thomas's wheels were clear, but still spun when he tried to move. Terence tugged and slipped and slipped and tugged, and at last dragged Thomas clear of the snow, ready for the journey home. I've come to help you with your passengers today. Help me, said Thomas. I can go faster than you. You can't, said Bertie. I can, huffed Thomas. I'll race you, said Bertie. The drivers agreed to the race going ahead. The station master said, are you ready? Go. Thomas never could go fast at first, and Bertie drew in front. Why don't you go fast? Why don't you go fast? Called Annie and Clarabel. Wait and see, wait and see, hissed Thomas. He's a long way ahead, they wailed. But Thomas didn't mind. He'd remembered the level crossing. There was Bertie fuming at the gates while they sailed gaily through. Goodbye, Bertie, called Thomas. After that, the road left the railway, so they couldn't see Bertie. Then they had to stop at the station to let off passengers. Peep, peep, peep! Quickly, please, called Thomas. And off they went again. Come along, come along, sang Thomas. We're coming along, we're coming along, sang Annie and Clarabelle. Hurry, 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 panted Thomas. Then he looked ahead. There was Bertie tooting triumphantly on his horn. Oh, dearie me, oh, dearie me, groaned Thomas. Steady, Thomas, said his driver. We'll beat Bertie yet. We'll beat Bertie yet. We'll beat Bertie yet, echoed Annie and Clarabel. We'll do it. We'll do it, panted Thomas. Oh, bother. There's a station. Then he heard Bertie. Goodbye, Thomas. You must be tired. Sorry, I can't stop. We buses have to work, you know. Goodbye. Oh, dear, thought Thomas. We've lost. But he felt better after a drink. The signal dropped. Hurrah, we're off! Hurrah, we're off, puffed Thomas. As they crossed the bridge, they heard an impatient honk, honk. There was Bertie waiting at the traffic lights. He started with a roar and chased on after Thomas again. Now Thomas reached his full speed. Bertie tried hard, but Thomas was too fast. Whistling triumphantly, he plunged into the tunnel, leaving Bertie toiling far behind. I've done it, I've done it, panted Thomas. 
We've done it, hooray! We've done it, hooray! chanted Annie and Clarabel as they whooshed into the last station. Everyone was there to celebrate Thomas's victory, but they gave Bertie a big welcome too. Percy was left alone. He didn't mind that a bit. He liked watching trains and being cheeky to the other engines. Hurry, 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 he would call, and they got very cross. After a great deal of shunting, Percy was waiting for the signalman to set the point so that he could get back to the yard. He was eager to work, but was being rather careless and not paying attention. Edward had warned Percy, be careful on the main line, whistle to the signalman, you are there. But Percy didn't remember to whistle, so the busy signalman forgot him. Percy waited and waited. The points were still against him, so he couldn't move. Then he looked along the main line. Peep, peep! He whistled in horror, for rushing straight towards him was Gordon with the express. Gordon, get out of my way! <laughs> Percy opened his eyes. Gordon had stopped with Percy's buffers a few inches from his own. But Percy had begun to move. I won't stay here. I'll run away, he puffed. He went straight through Edward's station and was so frightened that he ran right up Gordon's hill without stopping. After that, he was tired, but he couldn't stop. He had no driver to shut off steam and apply the brakes. I want to stop, I want to stop, he puffed. The man in the signal box saw Percy was in trouble, so kindly set the points. Percy puffed wearily onto a nice empty siding, ending in a big bank of earth. He was too tired now to care where he went. I want to stop. I want to stop. I have stopped, he puffed thankfully. Never mind, Percy, said the workman as they dug him out. You shall have a drink and some coal, and then you'll feel better. Presently, Gordon arrived. Well done, Percy. You started so quickly that you stopped a nasty accident. I'm sorry I was cheeky, said Percy. You were clever to stop. Henry was ready at five o'clock. There was snow and frost. Men hustled and shouted, loading the vans with crates of fish. The last door banged, the guard showed his green lamp. The flying kipper was ready to go. Come on, come on, don't be silly, don't be silly, puffed Henry to the vans. The vans shuddered and groaned, trock, trick, trock, trick, all right, all right. That is better, that is better, puffed Henry. Clouds of smoke and steam poured from his funnel into the cold air, and the fire's light shone brightly. Hurry, 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 panted Henry. They were going well. The light grew better. Signal light shone green as they passed. Then a yellow signal appeared ahead. His driver prepared to stop. But the home signal was down. All clear, Henry. Away we go. They couldn't know the points from the main line to a siding were frozen, and the home signal should have been set at danger, but snow had forced it down. A goods train was waiting in the siding to let the flying kipper pass, and the driver and fireman were drinking cocoa in the brake van. The kipper is due, said the guard. 
Who cares, said the fireman. This is good cocoa. The driver got up. Come on, fireman, back to our engine. They got out just in time. Henry's driver and fireman had jumped clear before the crash, but Henry lay dazed and surprised. The fat controller came to see him. The signal was down, sir, said Henry. Cheer up, Henry, it wasn't your fault. Ice and snow caused the accident. I'm sending you to crew a fine place for sick engines. They'll give you a new shape and a larger firebox. You'll feel a different engine and won't need special coal anymore. Won't that be nice? Yes, sir, said Henry doubtfully. A lady and a stout gentleman stood on Toby's platform. He was, of course, the fat controller. But Toby didn't know this yet. Come on, Grandfather, cried the children. Do look at this engine. That's a tram engine, Stephen, said the fat controller. Is it electric? asked Bridget. Hush! hissed Toby. Shh, shh, said her brother. You've offended him. But trams are electric, aren't they? They are mostly, but this is a steam tram. May we go in it, Grandfather? Please? Stop, said the fat controller to the guard. They all scrambled into Henrietta. Hip, hip, hooray, chanted Henrietta. But Toby did not sing. Electric indeed, electric indeed, he snorted. He was very hurt. What is your name? asked the fat controller. Toby, sir. Thank you, Toby, for a very nice ride. Thank you, sir, said Toby. He felt better now. This gentleman, he thought, is a gentleman who knows how to speak to engines. The children came every day for a fortnight. Sometimes they rode with the guard, sometimes in empty trucks. On the last day of all, the driver invited them into his cab. All were sorry when they had to go away. And the fat controller and his family thanked everyone. Come again soon, replied Toby. We will, we will, called the children. And they waved till Toby was out of sight. The months passed. Toby had few trucks and fewer passengers. Our last day, Toby, said his driver one morning. The manager says we must close tomorrow. That day, everyone wanted the chance of a last ride. The passengers joked and sang, but Toby and his driver wished they wouldn't. Goodbye, Toby, said the passengers afterwards. We are sorry your line is closing down. So am I, said Toby. Nobody wants me, Toby thought, and went on happily to sleep. The fat controller was having breakfast. He was eating toast and marmalade. The butler came in. Excuse me, sir, you are wanted on the telephone. Bother that telephone, said the fat controller. I'm sorry, my dear, he said to his wife. Thomas is in trouble with the police, and I must go at once. At the station, Thomas's driver told the fat controller what had happened. Dangerous to the public, indeed. We'll see about that. The fat controller spoke to the policeman. But however much he argued with him, it was no good. The law is the law, he said, and we can't change it. The fat controller felt exhausted. I'm sorry, driver, he said. It's no use arguing with policemen. We will have to make those cowcatcher things for Thomas, I suppose. Everyone will laugh, sir, said Thomas. 
They'll say I look like a tram. The fat controller stirred. Then he laughed. Well done, Thomas. Why didn't I think of it before? We want a tram engine. When I was on my holiday, I met a nice little engine called Toby. He takes trucks from the farms, but the lorries are taking over most of his work and he needs a change. He has cow catchers and side plates. I'll write to his controller at once. A few days later, Toby arrived. That's a good engine, said the fat controller. I see you've brought your coach, Henrietta. You don't mind, do you, sir? asked Toby. The station master wanted to use her as a hen house, and that would never do. No, indeed, said the fat controller. We couldn't allow that. Toby made the silly trucks behave even better than Thomas did. First, Thomas was jealous, but he was so pleased when Toby rang his bell and frightened the policeman, they've been firm friends ever since. Wake up, Gordon, said his driver. A special train's coming, and where to pull it? Is it coaches or trucks? Trucks, said his driver. Trucks, said Gordon. Puh! Gordon's fire was slow to start, so Edward had to push Gordon to the turntable to get him facing the right way. I won't go, I won't go, grumbled Gordon. Don't be silly, don't be silly, puffed Edward. At last Gordon was on the turntable. The movement had shaken his fire. It was now burning nicely and making steam. Gordon was cross and didn't care what he did. He waited till the table was halfway round. I'll show them, I'll show them, he hissed. He moved slowly forward to jam the table, but he couldn't stop himself and slithered into a ditch. Ooh, she hissed. Get me out! Get me out! Not a hope, said his driver and fireman. You're stuck, you silly great engine. Don't you understand that? They telephoned the fat controller. So Gordon didn't want to take the special train and ran into a ditch. What's that you say? The special's waiting. Tell Edward to take it, please. And Gordon? Oh, leave him where he is. We haven't time to bother with him now. <laughs> On the other side of the ditch, some little boys were chattering. Coo, doesn't he look silly? They'll never get him out. They began to sing. Silly old Gordon fell in a ditch, fell in a ditch, fell in a ditch. Silly old Gordon fell in a ditch all on a Monday morning. Gordon lay in the ditch all day. Oh dear, he thought, I shall never get out. But that evening they lifted Gordon and made a road of sleepers under his wheels to keep him from the mud. Strong ropes were fastened to his back end and James and Henry, pulling hard, managed to bring him to safety. Late that night, Gordon crawled home, a sadder and wiser engine. One day after pulling the big express, Gordon had arrived back at the sidings very tired. 
He was just going to sleep when Thomas came up in his cheeky way. Wake up, lazy bones. Do some hard work for a change. You can't catch me. And off he ran laughing. Instead of going to sleep again, Gordon thought how he could get back at Thomas. One morning, Thomas wouldn't wake up. His driver and fireman couldn't make him start. His fire went out and there was not enough steam. It was nearly time for the express. People were waiting, but the coaches weren't ready. At last, Thomas started. Oh dear, oh dear, he yawned. He fussed into the station where Gordon was waiting. Hurry up, you, said Gordon. Hurry yourself, replied Thomas. Gordon began making his plan. Yes, said Gordon, I will. And almost before the coaches had stopped moving, Gordon reversed quickly and was coupled to the train. Get in quickly, please, he whistled. Thomas usually pushed behind the big trains to help them start, but he was always uncoupled first. This time, Gordon started so quickly they forgot to uncouple Thomas. Gordon's chance had come. Come on, come on, puff Gordon to the coaches. The train went faster and faster, too fast for Thomas. He wanted to stop, but he couldn't. Peep, peep, stop, stop. Hurry, 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 laughed Gordon. You can't get away, you can't get away, laughed the coaches. Poor Thomas was going faster than he had ever gone before. He was out of breath and his wheels hurt him, but he had to go on. I shall never be the same again, he thought sadly. My wheels will be quite worn out. At last they stopped at a station. Thomas was uncoupled, and he felt very silly and exhausted. Next, he went on to a turntable, thinking of everyone laughing at him. And then he ran on to a siding out of the way. Well, little Thomas, chuckled Gordon, now you know what hard work means. Don't... Next morning, Edward woke up to find nothing had changed. Gordon was still boasting. You watch me, little Edward, as I rush through with the express. That will be a splendid sight for you. Goodbye, little Edward. Look out for me this afternoon. Edward went off to do some shunting. Edward liked shunting. It was fun playing with trucks. He would come up quietly and give them a push. Then he would stop and the silly trucks would go bump into each other. Oh, they cried, whatever is happening. Edward played till there were no more trucks. Then he stopped to rest. Presently, he heard a whistle. Gordon was very cross. Instead of nice shining coaches, he was pulling a lot of very dirty trucks. A good strain, a good strain, a good strain, he grumbled. The shame of it, the shame of it, oh, the shame of it. Edward laughed and went to find some more trucks. Then there was trouble. Gordon can't get up the hill, the porter called to Edward's driver. Will you take Edward and push him, please? They found Gordon halfway up and very cross. His driver and fireman were talking to him severely. You're not trying. I can't do it, said Gordon. The noisy trucks hold an engine back so. Edward's driver came up. We've come to push. No use at all, said Gordon. You wait and see, replied Edward's driver. They brought the train back to the bottom of the hill. I'm ready, said Edward. No good, grumbled Gordon. They pulled and pushed as hard as they could. Mm -hmm. 
I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it, Puff Gordon. I will do it. I will do it. I will do it, puffed Edward. Edward pushed and puffed and puffed and pushed as hard as ever he could. And almost before he realized it, Gordon found himself at the top of the hill. I've done it. I've done it. I've done it, he said proudly. He forgot all about Edward and didn't wait to say thank you. Edward was left out of breath and far behind. He ran on to the next station and there he found that the driver and fireman were very pleased with him.